Bracing the Storm, Infection Control for Endoscopic Training During COVID-19 Pandemic in New York City by Dr. Al Khazraji, Ahmed, Singh, Saeed, and Gurum. We have nothing to disclose. The overview is infection control at work, at home, PPE utilization, and mitigating COVID-19 risk at home. When COVID-19 started in Wuhan, it spread across the world like wildfire. New York City was hard hit. Elmhurst Hospital is located in Queens, where the epicenter of the COVID-19 in the U.S. started. Elmhurst Hospital was a 30-bed ICU hospital, which became a 100-bed within days. With this, we had a rigorous program for our fellows to prevent any infection and mitigate risk. Even though this is the case, we did get one fellow who was infected and had to change our practice. Once you are found positive, what happened next? So I woke up that day with severe shortness of breath and, and chest tightness. Um, I was so worried because I didn't have any pulse ox on me. So I have to run to the emergency department uh, to be tested. Uh, not sure at that time what's my outcome, whether I need therapy or not. Uh, the ear physician um, did all necessary actions. You know, I didn't require any, thankful I didn't require any uh, imaging of blood work. My oxygenation was 98%. I had an EKG with normal QTC, uh, and the ER physician advised to start hydroxychloroquine. But the bad thing is, is I went to the pharmacy, and the pharmacy couldn't dispense the medication. He said it's only spared for patients who are acutely uh, admitted with uh, COVID-19, or the patients who receive the first dose in the emergency department. So tell us what you've learned during this COVID-19 experience so others could learn from you. Uh, there's a lot to learn during this rough time. Uh, I will summarize in a home point, uh, take home points. First is uh, don't underestimate your GI symptoms. It could be a signs of early disease, the lack of taste and smell, which can affect your uh, eating. So make sure you hydrate yourself and eat properly. And uh, number two is make sure you have the thermometer and pulse ox, which can save me an ER trip, actually. Third is if you're willing to start a hydroxychloroquine therapy, uh, you should consult your ER physician and ask him to administer the first dose, and you can continue at home. Uh, fourth is always have a plan B, especially with two professionals working full-time physician. You should always have a plan B for a child care, whether it's friends or family. Lastly, it's a rough, you know, it's a rough time, but remember there's always silver lining at the end that you can save someone's life by donating your plasma. With this in mind, we had to change our policy where we asked all fellows to come with gloves and a mask and goggles when they're coming from home. We'd make sure that they change into scrubs in the hospital to prevent taking the infection home or bringing it in to the hospital. We make sure that they wear gloves, masks, shoe covers, and goggles. We check their temperature on a daily basis, twice a day, and also check their oxygen sets. We did social distancing by making them six, six feet apart and also did WebEx and Zoom for lectures. Since you're running out of face shields, we made our own face shields and also bought reusable shields. We wore our N95 and on top of that, a surgical mask. We kept reutilizing our N95 mask for about three days to recycle every three days. We also started using procedural oxygen masks to prevent reflux of droplets. We use Santa cloth and Santa cloth with bleach to wipe down everything. And for a more natural disinfectant, we use seventh generation, which also kills H1 and other viruses. At the end of the day, we made sure that all the fellows would wipe down the surfaces that they would touch, including the inside and outside of the handles and their rooms, as well as their keyboard and their computer uh, desk. We would also ask them to wipe down their chairs, and this all decreases the infection rate. At the end of the day, we would ask them to return to scrubs and wear their regular uh, scrubs when they go back home. To keep the sanctity of the house um, to prevent infections from entering in, we uh, request everyone to take their shoes off outside as fomites can be carried on these shoes. It is extremely important to wipe down your hands multiple times during this process to prevent any infection from coming home. The sanitizer that's on your hands is also helpful to disinfect other objects like your keys and the surfaces you touch, so keep as much sanitizer as possible. Once inside the house, make sure you have two paper bags 
next to each other and put your regular bag next to it. Once you sanitize your hands again, make sure you take your mask off from the back of your ears and then place it inside one of those bags. The rest of your accessories, including your watch, your headphones, your cell phone and wallets can be placed in a separate bag which can be cleaned later. Again, after wiping down your hands, it is important to um, sanitize your zipper as well on your jacket and without touching anything using your elbow to try to open the closet and put your jacket away from the rest of your other coats. Next thing is to wash all your clothes from that day and take a shower. Once the shower is finished we tell it to go backwards to wipe down all the surfaces that you could have touched um, and uh, especially the handles and the knobs and everything else. Uh, it's important to wipe down the washer and dryer as well as your accessories. If you do have a car, remember to wipe down the steering wheel and the handles. So now tell us uh, some things that you do uh, above the rest of the stuff that we already do to protect your family. As we are aware, New York City apartments tend to be a little smaller. That's a two-bedroom apartment. I still live with my 15-month-old baby and my 60-year-old father. I try to maintain social distancing, try to stay at least six feet apart whenever I'm home as much as possible. I do not uh, feed my son anymore. I don't give him a bath. Uh, uh, I, I don't kiss him, which I really miss. Uh, I sleep uh, in the hall. I don't use my bedroom anymore. I sleep on the couch, rather. These are some of the small uh, precautions I take apart from the uh, regular ones to keep my family safe. Remember to change into hospital scrubs and shoe covers and gloves. Always clean your space and cognizant on what you touch. Remember to follow our regiment or protocol at home. And social distancing even at home is very important, especially if you have children and elderly. We would like to thank the first line healthcare providers for all that they do and for Video GIE for giving this opportunity to share our experience.